wings of fire. Let's get ranking these books. Just letting you know right now, I don't have all of the books. The only ones I'm missing are Dragon Slayer and the other three of the Winglets Quartet books, but I haven't even finished reading the first one, so we're gonna just ignore the Winglets Quartet. I'm also missing Moon Rising, Winter Turning, and Escaping Peril, but I've read those all a bazillion times, so yeah. Let's start. Clay! <laughs> Dragonette Prophecy. <laughs> Dragonette Prophecy is actually a really good start to the series, I'd say. It starts off with Clay, the really kind and always hungry mud mudwing. And I actually think that his character is pretty good. The starting with Hibber... Hibber... Vi Hiviter, I'm gonna call him that from now on, Hiviter. I actually really like that suspense with it. And to be honest, like the, the whole book had me like shaking because I've never read Wings of Fire before. Like I was really nervous about the events of it because like the prologue with Hiviter just got me immediately scared of this series and I put the book down <laughs> as soon as I finished reading the prologue and it took me like a whole two weeks of encouragement to finally finish book one. But as soon as I did, I was already too deep into the series and pretty good book. Next one. That's the wrong book. Yeah. Book two. Oh wait, never mind. That's turtle, not tsunami. Book two. I'm sorry to all the people who love tsunami, but I really don't like it. Like the second book was not as good as the first, and also worse than the third one, in my opinion. Starflight, get off of the floor. <laughs> We're talking about you later, but like. To be completely honest, the plot for this one was just all over the place. <laughs> like, I actually didn't expect Tsunami to know that she was in the royal family from when she mentioned it in the first book. I thought she was literally just really, really confident. And I think that is just a bizarre coincidence. I let it slide, but a bunch of other stuff have started happening in uh, like the other dragonettes of the destiny barely even showed up for the rest of this book and that's it pretty much why i don't like it like they were imprisoned i know but like could we, could we at least get some action with them uh yeah like that's really all i gotta say like with all the dragonettes of destiny being in the book that's what makes it good, in my opinion. So, sorry, Tsunami. Third book, Hidden Kingdom. I'm not gonna throw you this time, Glory. Psych! <laughs> I actually really like this one. To be honest, my favorite part of the book that I couldn't stop rereading was when Glory was going up against the Queen's for the throne. I really liked it. And with the whole thing with the Rainwings disappearing, the secret Nightwing Island going to the Ice Kingdom, I liked that too. And, uh, and also, I think how it's really convenient how despite Deathbringer, wait, did, did Deathbringer was able to read minds? I don't think so. I don't think he was one of those Nightwings. I love how he just, like, was conveniently there the moment the Dragonettes of Destiny were there. I and It's kind of like the situation with Tsunami actually being part of the royal family, but better because no one expected it. Not even Glory or Starfly or anyone. And I'd say it's good. Dark Secret, Starfly...
I love this one. It's actually more of a sequel to Hidden Kingdom. Like, if these two were their own arc, it would actually make a bit of sense. Because if you put these two together, like, like both of these two were together in Hidden Kingdom and Starflight had his own journey in a different book, it would actually make a bit of sense. Because Glory gets mentioned a lot in Dark Secret. Starflight, unfortunately, doesn't get mentioned a lot in Hidden Kingdom, but Deathbringer, my favorite character, does. Wait, who are we talking about, right? Starflight. I, re I actually really like it, like, with the false dragonets of destiny, Starflight figuring out a bunch of stuff going on, the volcanic eruption, the prophecies fake and stuff, Nightwings don't have powers. I like it. Brightest Night, the ending of Arc 1. An amazing ending. Sunny is just a sweet little cinnamon bun going on a little adventure. It's so cute. Okay, the book's actually not that cute, but like Sunny going on a little adventure, like me imagining that. She's so adorable. I like Sunny. She's sweet. Whenever the book talks about her, I can't help but smile. The ending when like Blister just straight up turns into ashes because of Jabora's enchantment. Which Jabora was it? I forgot which Jabora it was. There's three. Uh, but I really did like it. And we like... And the prologue talks about what happened w with Oasis. The epilogue is a whole introduction to Arc 2, which is what we're going to talk about. Moonrise 